Okay, so I want to talk about two JavaScript um, test-driven learning environments that you can use to uh, test and improve your JavaScript skills. Um, and we are going to be using Cloud9 IDE online. But if you want to use this on your local environment running a local IDE, you're more than welcome to. Okay, so the first thing we want to do is um, clone the repository into our uh, account, into our workspace. So we'll create a new workspace. We'll say clone from URL, and uh, we're going to paste our URL for JavaScript cones. The environment doesn't matter for this one. Uh, it will for the other um, repository. Okay, it's cloned now. Let's go ahead and start editing it. And now we've got our workspace loaded. We're going to open up jscones.html and go ahead and close that down. You can see it's got a CSS file and then a bunch of... Um, JavaScript files. These are all the assertions that we're going to try and pass. And then um, some other HTML to help get the Q unit, which is the unit test library that JS Cones use, uses up and running. We're going to press preview, and that's going to load our index file, this file, our Cones file, into um, a browser. Okay, and now it's loaded, and you see the first it um, reports back a couple of assertions and you can see the first one is okay in about uh, about asserts and um, that one is there and then um, we've got a failing one so let's go ahead and jump into these assertions we're going to go into our topics folder and you can see we've got about um, all of these are JavaScript uh, test files and we're going to open up about asserts um, they are run differently in a different order than they are alphabetized so keep that in mind that you're gonna have to kind of jump around to get to the order and the order they're run in is based on um, the way they're loaded through script So let's go to about asserts and you can see um, we have three test functions and we're gonna check I'm not really sure why the first one is running okay it's kinda weird what will satisfy the OK assertion. Um, I'm going to say true. And we'll save it and we will refresh. And it seems like it's OK. Um, let's see what else. Uh, what will? What is a false value? Well, that's pretty simple. Uh, false. Save it and refresh. And it failed. What is a false value not? false that should pass it looked like it was a caching issue so let's do this test um, what will satisfy the equals assertion one plus one well that is an easy answer the answer is two two satisfies that so the idea here is that with this test equals you want to make sure that the first parameter passed in and the second parameter passed in are the same um, I didn't talk about the first okay assertion and the not assertion the OK assertion basically, um, let's go ahead and look that up on the QUnit website to be correct. OK, we're at the QUnit website and we're taking a look through their API. We're going to take a look at OK. It's a Boolean assertion. Um, you just want to make sure that the first argument is truthy. So really we could pass in a lot of things into this. Um, one uh, true, a string, I think those all should work. And then not, not asserts that something is falsy or false. So if I change this to true, and I change this to false, let me refresh. We don't have that. Okay, so the first one fails, which is good. Um, the second one passes. Sorry, that's uh, this one passes. It doesn't show this test because the way that JS Cones is set up is that it hides all tests that fail except the first one. That way you don't have to see a bunch of failing tests as you're going through this. So we're going to change this back to true, save it and refresh, and we're still going to have a failing test, but their first one's going to pass now. So you see it's true, it fails because it's not a false value. So we'll change it back to false, and then refresh the page. Okay, now we've got three passing tests, and it's moved on to about operators. Um, that's about where I'm going to stop our look at JavaScript cones. 
um, you get the basic idea that you are just going in to your each of these files and you're replacing the underscores with um, what you think should happen. So let's do one last one. We want to do uh, what is the value of the result and so um, it's basically a loop that goes through five times and adds to itself and you could do that calculation or you can come over here and cheat and see that the result is equal to 15 and so what we need to do is make sure that result is equal to the number 15 and so we can save that and refresh and now our fourth one passes and then from a test driven perspective say we go in and we change that to four now you'll see that that fourth one no longer passes because it's expecting the value to be 10 because it never runs that fifth time. So um, that's JavaScript Cones. It's a really fun little library uh, available on GitHub and you can just go through all of these topics. There's plenty of them in, in there and they get into some really deep JavaScript stuff. So I uh, highly recommend it for learning some uh, new JavaScript skills. Okay, the next one we're going to look at is JS Assessment. And this isn't so much about learning new JavaScript skills, but it's rather about um, assessing skills of somebody who says they're a JavaScript developer or assessing your own skills. But you can use them to see where you are and see where you need to improve. Um, this one's a little bit more complicated because it does run off of Node. Um, and we are going to go ahead and do the same thing we did with JavaScript cones. We're going to create a new workspace. We're going to clone it. We'll paste in that GitHub URL. But this time we're going to choose Node.js as our runtime environment so that we can get it up and running. Okay, and it's loaded now. Let's go ahead and start editing. Okay, now in the instructions, um, the first thing stated is that we need to run npm install. And what this is going to do is install all the dependencies. Um, and so we go into our command line down here at the bottom. Um, this is just like any terminal and it's built in the um, directory. It's You're in the directory that the uh, workspace is in. And so we're going to run npm install. Okay, that's still going, but I want to talk about our next command, which is going to be node bin serve, which is basically going into the bin directory and serving um, our or starting our server that basically starts our server for us so we can have uh, something up and up and going so um, what we're going to do is paste that into the command line once this finishes downloading okay it's done so let's go ahead and paste this in and um, this is actually not going to work but i want to show um, the error that comes out and so what happened is it had an error that you may, that we're using the wrong port and host. So what we want to do is use the process environment port for our port in bin slash surf. You see here it's using port 444. Instead we want to pass in this variable. Um, there's a way to write it to where you, it will use this if, if it's there. Um, if not, it'll default to 444 but um, we're not going to mess with that right now. I may consider um, submitting a pull request to get that updated at a later time. So this may not be an issue in a little bit. Okay, so we've got that. We're going to go ahead and save that file and then try running node again. Okay, now it's going and um, it gives us a brief, uh, brief little message telling us um, what's going on. So it says open and visit a browser in localhost. I don't think this is going to work because we are not um, running this locally. We're running this within Cloud9. You can see it's not working. Uh, instead, what we can do is just run, and it's giving us an error. Let me see if I open that up. Oh, so it, it gave an error. I'm not really sure why, but it's working. So. What we're going to start doing now is working on these tests and see if we can get them to pass. So we are going to go into our test directory. Looks like it. every time you refresh the page, it's a different set of tests that get run. So that's kind of annoying. 
Um, I'd really prefer for it to be the same test so that you can um, look at them consistently. You can see we can open this in a new tab so that we can have the full view. But I kind of like doing it this way so that I can see both the output and, and my files. One other thing we can do is run um, npm test in our command line. Let that load up and we're going to run npm test and see if this works. Okay, it uh, worked in that all our tests failed. So that's good. Um, so yeah, that's another way of doing that, especially if you have it loaded on your local machine and you don't want to um, refresh the page and have to go to a browser every time. You can actually probably get that hooked up into Growl and that way, um, if you're familiar with Growl, you'll know what I'm talking about, to have it re report your tests um, or report how your tests are going. So let's go ahead and jump into arrays and um, see what this talks about. Okay, so what I'm doing is I'm looking in the wrong directory. <laughs> These are our tests that are going to be run and we need to go into the app directory and we are going to put our answers in here. So um, basically what this is doing is you need to you need to be able to look at the test to figure out what's going on. Basically, this is saying that the index of of uh, answers should equal a number. So the index of an array at index three should equal two. So what we're going to do is basically stub out that functionality, and so we're going to do we're just going to return array index of item save that and refresh let's see if we get yes we got one passed so index of is a if you're not familiar with it it's a native function of arrays so we don't have to do anything special we're just basically calling the native functionality that's already there and so this is how it's testing your javascript knowledge to make sure you're aware that arrays have an index of um, array does not have a native sum method so we're going to go ahead and write our own we're going to use the reduce method uh, for arrays, and then we're going to return that value. And let's see if this works. So you see if I got that right. Okay, we've got two passing now. Um, and so you keep going through, and now we've got a remove, which says remove this, um, remove this item from the array. Um, and they've got a whole bunch of array tests that you can go through. And the main thing to focus on up here is if you if that pass number increments each time, because otherwise you can see. Um, luckily this time it's got those results right here, the little check marks. But I have a feeling if I refresh this, yeah, you can't see it through there, so you'd have to scroll down, and that's kind of annoying. Um, the best thing to do is just look at the passes up there. And so uh, that's a basic walkthrough of JS cones and JS assessment and you can see it's uh, a two neat little code repositories to really test and push your JavaScript knowledge. And I actually think I need to go through and see if I can get all these passing because um, it'd be good a refresher for me to um, be able to do that. So, um, you know, if you have any questions.